Okay, so uh, so welcome, and I hope I can share what I have learned so far, and you can learn something <laughs> from what I have learned uh, in the past. I want to say I want to give some background information so you understand why I have developed all this and how I. I came to this point when I think the course space that I created is working. Okay. From Blackboard to Canvas, I had before inspired with one of the conversations that I had, with, even with David uh, uh, before, to create an iframe. Remember, we are doing an iframe and embedding on Blackboard? So the whole iframe idea came from that conversation, and it was working fine, but iframe is basically you create a website, and you feed that website into the learning management system. That's what it is. So it's basically instead of showing the Blackboard page or the Canvas page, we'll show the web page. And it has all the links, and soon as we'll navigate internally into the course space, but basically they are navigating through a web page that is hosting a server and a different server, and it was like, so every time that I have to update something, I have to update it on the web page, update the server on the website, and then we show up on Canvas. So I was creating a problem for me. So I was trying to find a way to make this easier. So one way to do this was to basically use the weak tools and find a way that I could create all those hyperlinks that I wanted in my course. Okay. So just to give you some background info, this is a, a course that I said is an undergrad course for 150 students. I have 10 sections. I teach all the ten, I lead all the 10 sections and my TAs help me uh, teaching the discussions or the labs, okay? So on this course, I also made another pedagogical decision which is blend the course. So the course is blended uh, since spring 2009, has been working just fine. So then my students, they have to have a nice environment because I don't use only the space for, as a depository, like when they just can go there and download things. They have to navigate and they have to make things online before they come to class. Because they have the pre-online assignment, which is they watch the lecture of that week, complete a quiz, do the labs, then they come to see me on face-to-face, -face, and then they have a follow-up assignment, which is the lab assignment for that week. It's flipping the class, exactly. So it's blended slash flip it model, okay? Uh, so when they come to see me, they already know the content and they have a follow-up assignment to make sure that they know what they're they are doing. Uh, today I'm not gonna talk about the face-to-face -face time, but I'm gonna talk how the students navigate and believe it or not, they do not send in mails to me and say, I cannot find this because the, the structure that I create, they can easily find this. They do not just rely on the left hand side menu on the course. In fact, I can just remove all the left side menu to just have home and they can navigate internally there. Okay? So the solution that I found for this was first to think back how my course is structured. So if I want if you want to do this, I'm just gonna show how I did. And I think I have scheduled I will confirm right I have scheduled a workshop mm -hmm of two hours on the ITL conference in which everyone's going to bring laptops with a course. Maria, you should come with your laptop, new laptop. <laughs> and, and be ready to work. Uh, my idea is that you can go walk away with your course already structured if you want to do this way. That's the goal of the workshop <laughs> in two hours. Okay, So I'm going to have people help me on the back end as well. But we're going we're gonna to find a way that you can design your space and walk away from the workshop already with the draft and how we're going to release your course. So everyone should have a master course space or some place that you can just a sandbox when you can play in the workshop. Okay. So how I thought about this, I have a course in doing a little simple math. I had a course that I have in general 16 weeks, right? I have my course is divided by modules. You can do by sections, by unit as your, your syllabus. So I have six modules, and each module lasts two weeks. Are you following? Mm -hmm. For each module that I have, and I'm not talking about Canvas module. Can you read this? Oh, the pen is not, is it bad? It's the same. So 
So for each module, it's bad, sorry. I have lectures. I think this is bad. Available for the students, and we'll talk about videos here, okay? I have podcasts. I have readings. I have quizzes. And I have lectures, podcasts, readings, with audio, quizzes, and I think that's it. And I have labs. It's a different category of assignments. Okay? So the students, they have, they learn is their job. I cannot learn for them. So I offer all the possibilities in, in the world that they can learn the content, okay? So how I, wor I organized this? I went first. Now talking about Canvas first. I went to Canvas and I basically create all the modules that I wanted, okay? I didn't want to do, th the only reason I did this is because some students like to navigate to those two buttons on the end to, through modules, okay? That helps, is an additional thing because they don't really need this. But since Mo Canvas offered this, I create that. So I have a Kines introduction, which is I have basic information and I have, in fact, I have a, a video that gives an overview of the course. And if you're teaching an online course, Maria, you can say, you can do an introduction, what is the course, and you can talk about the course syllabus. It's the first lecture that in general you do in the semester. You can talk about procedures and policy if they have to do, if the students who have a DSS uh, request, they should send an email to you with the email, the request, all the things that you want to address with the students. It's just basically an uh, uh, intro to the course itself. What the course is about and what the procedures and what are the policies, right? Then I did my modules one by one. And the module, does, they do not have all the little things that I have, lectures, reading, quizzes, all the files here, okay? What I did, I create one page only underneath, and that page is the front page of that module that's going to have all the hyperlinks that I want. Got it? So if you have 12 modules, I would recommend you to create module one, two, three, and underneath each module, you can create page, the first page, because when you add a module, it's just going to say, what do you want to add? A quiz, an assignment? You just add a page. So when you click, and uh, you name that page with the name of the module that you have, right? So the home page, basically, and I'll show to you what it is right now. So the home page, I create this front panel here. When I create that menu inside, and this is just an image that I create on PowerPoint, save as a JPEG and put here. So on PowerPoint, I just made the image and I put what I wanted, save as a JPEG, and I import it here. And I do have one for each semester with different color scheme. <laughs> okay, so my winter has a snow picture, the, the fall has, I'm gonna have a fall picture, so I basically do this. And I have orange, it's like this, so if it, in, general, in, general, in general I change this, and, I, and this is in fact my course syllabus, has the same course um, ID, let's say that way, design ID, okay? Uh, this is nothing else but a table with hyperlinks, okay? So if you decide to add it, this page so you can see the back end, here it is. This is a table that I went here, and you create a table here by clicking here. Create a table, you decide how many cells do you want. So I create this and I, and I create module one and I type it. And, what I, and then here's an image, that's it. Nothing else here, okay? This is a hyperlink that I created that goes straight to that page that's underneath module one on campus, got it? So when you click here, you stop and ask questions anytime, okay? So we can have a very interactive session. What's important here is for you to learn, not me to show. 
things. If you don't learn, I'll be frustrated. So if you click on module one here, it goes to the first page on the first module. Got it? And then here's the same thing. It's a wiki page that I design an image for each module. So for each module, that's what I'm going to do in the workshop. In the, for the beginning, I want people to identify an image for each module, and they can upload those images, and then we can just go ahead and build your own space. If people can create one module on the workshop, they can just recreate others afterwards. So for each module, I have everything that I need and an image here that represents that module. Okay. And you can see here all the pages that I, the modules and the page that I have. Okay. So because I create one page underneath each module, the students can just navigate through here. They don't have to go back to home and click on the orange menu, module one, two, three, four. They can go to the next module right here and move to the next module. Got it? Questions, yes? How do you do the buttons? This yep. is automatic by Canvas. So when you create this, oh, okay. when you create those modules here, Canvas already understands there's a sequence on it for module one. You can change the order here. Okay. So when you create this headings, module one, two, three, and you can put a na different name here, section one, unit one, whatever you want to create. But Canvas will create those buttons automatically for you. Okay. I could also have replicated this menu, orange menu here, on top of module one here. I have done this in different courses for the school. So on top, you're always going to have module one, two, three, four, five, six, as well as this. I'm going to talk about this menu re here right now, which is the most important. The, my frustration also was that on a web page, you can really play with it, with the design. You can put like different shapes. On, on a wiki page, you're going to be somehow restricted with tables at this level. I think there's other levels that you can explore and develop a little bit better on HTML code that you can play with it. Okay? But that's a very simple thing. And I will tell you that I work on School of Public Health teaching other faculty how to do this. So we deployed an executive MPH. And uh, we have developed already uh, about uh, eight online course. Those courses are fully online. They are different courses. And I create kind of a concept. We're using the same concept here. So those are students who are not young students. Students are not tech savvy. And I deploy a concept that I kept constant in all the core courses for the MPH. And we have used, and I taught the faculty, we develop a kind of a, a graphic template for all the programs, so when the students change the course, they already got, they learn and they know exactly where to find things. And I and I am the contact person for the, all the MPH students if they have any problem, technical problem, Canvas on the school. I never receive one email <laughs> from a student asking me that I'm having trouble with this, I cannot find this. And, and the professors that I work with, they learn very quickly how to do this. Because it's a very, it's like a, making a PowerPoint or making a, a, a Word document with tables. That's what you have here. It's uploading image and making tables. Okay. So what I have done is for each module, the students will have all that I need them to learn for that module, right? So they have to have lectures, podcasts, readings, quizzes, and labs. Okay. They also have, I forgot here. They have scripts, and I'll tell you what it is. So my lectures are basically videos that I recorded. A lot of faculty just do voiceover PowerPoint. I have done that, but right now I have myself on a video talking. Uh, the podcast is because my students said, a lot of students love the idea of having the videos, but they love the fact that they can rerun, they can, they can just rewind and, and listen before the exam or something. But the first semester that I thought planned that one student said, Dr. Marshall, can I have only the audio file? I say, why? They say, because after I watched the first time, I like to listen in a shuttle bus. <laughs> Don't you have anything better to listen in a shuttle bus? 
say, no, that's my way to just rerun in my head things that you have said. And I say, well, my, with my funny accent, I don't think it's going to be helpful. <laughs> and then he say, no, I really like the idea of having the audio. And I have downloaded the videos on my phone and I play the videos. Because I, in the beginning, I was very exploratory with all this. And I tell us, if you don't watch my lectures, that's fine. Just tell me. I want to know what you're doing. It's about you. It's not about me. I have taught this course for 18 years in my life. I want to know if, how you're doing this. So they keep saying, I never watch your lecture. I say, okay, what do you do? I say, I'm not going to punish you, whatever. Like, just tell me what you do. So I listen to it on a the bus and, I, and say, well, the audio file will be helpful to you. It's like, oh, it's going to be much better. So the audio file helped them. The readings are basically scientific papers related with that module. Papers that I use, the reference that I use to create that, the, that video lecture that I have. The quizzes are basically quizzes, and you're going to see here is I use the quiz function on, on, on Canvas. Labs are discussion sections, a little bit more active learning, because uh, they do 20 students per session only. So they really have readings here. Implement, they, in each lab, they have readings. They have videos to watch. They have an assignment. They have group work to do here on the labs. And my TAs manage that part. And the scripts is like the podcast. A lot of students ask me, because what happened in my videos, I do not use PowerPoint. So start, students start being shaking. It's like, where is, where is the PowerPoint? I need a PowerPoint. If I don't have PowerPoint, I don't have handouts, I cannot study for the exam, right? Mm -hmm. Our students became so addictive to handouts and PowerPoints. They say, there's no PowerPoint for this class. They say, no, I cannot learn if I don't have PowerPoint. So, and then I say, well, what I can do for you? And so uh, basically what I did, I have transcribed all the lectures. In fact, I have scripts that I developed for my lectures. So I say, you know what? You don't have to go crazy and keep taking notes because they pause the lecture and take notes. I give to you. Your job is not keep, uh, is not in, do anything else but to learn <laughs> what I'm teaching in this class. So they can complain that they don't have enough resource to learn, right? So they have the scripts as well. So and I'm just going to take that for readings, podcasts, scripts, and labs. I develop one page when I have. All the labs, module one, module two, module three. I'll tell you. So readings here. I basically, to facilitate, I copy and paste the menu here. And I copy and paste the menu here just in case they want to go back. So they don't have to go here, never. OK, to facilitate this. And I, I put an image here on readings. And they can go here. And they have module one, two, three, four, and they have all the papers linked here. So I'm assuming that you know how to do the hyper hyperlink to a file. If you do not know, it's an easy thing to learn on Canvas. So they have, for module four, they need to read Astrotilling's paper in 1984, Zelazo 1976, and read this. Those are reading assignments that I suggest them to read. Uh, if you click on podcasts, it's in the same structure, OK? And then the students click here. They can listen to the podcast, which is, I never embedded this. When I upload the file, Canvas does this play here, <laughs> this play signal here. But they can also download the file here, I believe. OK? So when you click here, it transforms in something else. See? So you just listen. Many professionals may be interested in the topic. So they can really listen to what I am uh, I'm talking. But they like to download, a lot of students download this. I, I never, I don't know if you realize, but a lot of students record your lectures. I don't give them permission. I said, you have to ask me permission to do this because, because I flipped the class. The privilege of coming should not be given by any virtual way. So I said, if you're coming to class, I am not doing panopto, I'm not recording the face to face time. If you want to see me, you come to see me. It's a privilege. That's what it is. And the scripts are a bunch of uh, basically, as I say, transcripts of all my lectures. And I do include here the study guide on the transcripts. Why I put a study guide here on the transcripts and not put on, on the readings is because the study guide, here I can force them to explore this tab. Although they love the idea of having the scripts because they don't have to take notes while they are listening to the video. Some of them just say, I just read the script. I do not even watch the video. 
as long as they are learning, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, the the labs is the same structure. With the GIF is that they have the lab one guidelines. What is the lab is about and what they want to have to do in the labs? What they're going to do with the students? So they have already an information prior to come to the lab, what they're going to do in the lab section. And they have the assignment here, which is due online through a discussion board in general. Okay? The lab assignment, I use the discussion board, different than the quiz. Yes. Can you show the back end of this page? The lab one? No, no. The back end of this page? There's only one or two tables at the top? There is one and two tables here. It's just basically, when you do the first one, believe, and you create all the hyperlinks, you just copy and paste and keep pasting them. <laughs> or basically what I do, I just uh, create a page and go copy and we we'll open two different tabs and I copy and paste in all the modules and all the, and the links, they came together. So you don't have to review the links. And when, and I'm hesitant to say that, and that, that you can confirm, but I never have to update the links when I migrate to one course, when I ex import into a different semester. It changed the whole... As long as you import, if you copy and paste, they'll break. So no, when I copy and paste yeah. pages, it's fine. But when I e export and I import one course space from one semester to another, all the links will be up updated to the new course space that you have for that particular term, which is was very helpful to me because if I have to revisit all these hyperlinks to update the core space, it will be a pain. Well, sir, can you comment on how you created your, your secondary, um, yeah, the, the This right one? Is it looks more like an image than a... No, it is a, it, you cannot, s can you see here it's a table like this? It's just the background color, gray. But I think if you highlight here, you can see, look. But I just put a background gray to differentiate for the first one. I really think I, I still need to improve a little bit this, but I, but it's working <laughs> at least. I, I had a different menu, which was much more interesting and sophisticated before when I had the web page, because I used to have a developmental trajectory, because the course about development. So they used to click as they want to explore this. Uh, the modules were in the developmental trajectory, like they're developing throughout the course. Yes. Down that you have the module visible to the students on the left. Yeah. Um, do you, have you tried it where you kind of hide that area from student visibility and just have the page, or do you, do you see people kind of going in there? I, I don't think I, I'm able on Canvas to track how they are clicking on this, mm -hmm. but the students find very helpful to have the chance that I don't have to go back to the home page right. to go to a different module. For example, if they are here, looking at the lab, I'll give you an example. Let's go back here. For example, if they are here looking at lab ch module two, so I have a question here, I have something that they download, and they want to go to module five for some reason. They're studying for the final, for example. If they go down here, they cannot move to modules. Do you see that? Because it's a page, it's not a, a, the same thing that I created before. So I j they can go here and go to module five and six. So it can jump very quickly. The idea is to give them a chance to jump whatever they want to do. They can go everywhere. In fact, I have students say, come to me at the end and say, I love the way that you organize this, but can you teach my professors? <laughs> for lectures, it's different. Because for lectures, I have several things to say in a page. But I found that if I have to create one readings only for module two, I have to create one page and create three lines. And then another page and three lines for module three. Why am I going to do this? I, w I, need, I need to save my time to do this, right? <laughs> so I basically decide for this the kind of thing, I can just create every, every uh, and they do not want to go crazy with different individual pages if I have to give just one piece of information this size, right? Yes. So with the HTML knowledge you have, So a little bit lower yeah, than. Yeah, not something you can mm -hmm. do with the with mm -hmm. the, the tools that mm -hmm. are on the, the, the toolbar, but 
but going to HTML page. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and enhancement. And enhancement, yeah. So I now, since, since we are talking here, I'm going to show how I do the lectures, right? So, and I always put the home button here so they can go to the home here. But the lectures, when you click here, these are the lectures for module two only. Because I have a lot to say here, not just on a hyperlink for a reading. So, for example, this is a lecture for module two, and then the module is about nature and nurture. What I basically do here, what this module is about, and tell the students there are three video tutorials for this module. Right? And here they have the video for the module one. So, sorry, for this module, they have the first video, second video, and the third video. Since each module lasts two weeks, right? Remember that? So the first week they have to do the nature nurture and watch the three videos. One, two, three before coming to class. I hate because when you put a YouTube video, they don't show up nice like this. <laughs> this is camp, it's not my fault. <laughs> then I also have on the second week, I have a different lectures, but the same module. But I just basically put a line here and I put a different topic because on the second week of the same module, we're going to be talking about something else. And I decide to do a graphic here on a PowerPoint for each module. So I can do this uh, for each readings, for each quiz, each, uh, uh, and create an individual page, but it's going to be something very short like this. So I decide just to put everything all together. Okay? In fact, with a lot of faculty that did be afterwards, they didn't do even this way. They just create a module one page, which has lectures, readings, scripts, well, podcasts, thing. and everything. But then students have everything on the module there. Okay. And the students went, because this is a um, embedded code, the students can watch just right here, the videos. Right? And they can just go ahead so here and watch. And they can also go off on Vimeo. And they can also expand here and watch right here. And then if they go back. So they, I'm trying to find a way that students cannot keep downloading those <laughs> features. Okay. I think if they go Vimeo, I prevent them from downloading. But they find a way to download. And then they go over here and watch the lectures. And then they know that they have to go and take the quiz. So when they click on the quiz, the quiz is also for that particular module. I can just go in and click on the quiz two only and straight to the quiz, okay? <laughs> and you can change the size of this. It will be smaller and bigger. As long as you have a little bit of skills, I don't have a lot of skills on HTML, but when you add it, you can make changes right here. And that's how it's gonna show the back end. But then if you go to HTML editor here, you get into this mess. Recently I had a very interesting uh, situation. All my Vimeo videos will not play. Then I go, I went back to that frustration and I still receiving like 150 mistakes. I can't watch the video, what's going on on Canvas, right? If they click on the Vimeo, they can go off. But I'm not watching, I cannot watch it. And then I finally talked to, talk to Deb, we realized that all the browsers decide to upgrade the security level. So all my links on Vimeo needs to be HTTPS instead of just HTTP. So then I have to go, for the first time that I have to edit this, for each and find here in this bunch of junk <laughs> code here. Where is the, the HTTP and the add an S on each of them, okay? It was fun. But when I fixed it, I, I, the problem was solved. So one thing that I learned and I thought was very interesting by doing this is that I can go here, and I, you're probably wondering how I did this. When I create a module, and this is, in fact, this is not a link, right? So when I come here, I just do right click, and I copy link location. Then I go to my home. And at the table that I did here, so when I click here, I go here and create a link, 
And in fact, Canvas will give to you already pasted the link in here <laughs> that you just copied. Yes. Can you get in this way? Because the link become absolute link. It will reference back to this cost base. So when you do the cost copy, it updates everything. But it reference to this space. I know. Yeah. But it updates. Automatically. That was amazed because I said, now I'm going to go there. Oh, yeah, I have done this for six semesters. I never, I never changed. <laughs> and I did not know that. That was just, I just said here. Well, the good thing is that I thought, now I have to import. And I started revisiting all the links. And I say, it's not the same link because the course number, because what I did, I figured that I can just change the number. I don't have to even keep copying and paste. And just because the same course number, right? And then I say, it's already updated. And this happened like four semesters ago. And now I just don't even bother. Because remember, I teach this course four times a year. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. So it will be not an ideal thing. I'll be already on Deb's case to say, can you just find something a different way to do? I'll be calling you guys to say, can you just get this organized and fixed? And that was great because when I, when I, expo when I import into my new term, everything is all good to go. I think... Yeah, never happened. Uh, never had a problem. Never had a problem. The same thing happened when you want to link a quiz. So you want to have a hyperlink to a particular quiz. You can just go here, copy the link location for the quiz, and put it there. I did intentionally to just to make sure the students know that they have all the quiz that I have done, 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 done. When I go here, so the students in the module two. And they click on quizzes. It gives the, all the quizzes that they need to take. Okay, and I'll tell, I'll tell you why I did this. I use exactly the same thing for summer and winter. Okay, on summer and winter, my students do not have one quiz per week, but rather they have three or four quizzes in one week. I teach a summer course. This course is three what, three weeks course. So they have to take four quizzes in, the, in a week. So I don't want to create one course template for summer, one for winter, one for spring. So I can change the images and I can play with it. The idea. So I know that I'm in a different <laughs> course space, <laughs> right? But well, I can change the graphics of it. But I, when I have the same thing, I can just reuse regardless of the length of the course. It's a 15 weeks. Three weeks or six weeks in the summer, or three weeks in the winter. So that's why I decided to do all the quizzes. All my my hyperlink lead is gonna hyperlink to the, all the quizzes. The students will know the ones that they already taken because it is even not even available anymore with that. Questions? And what I can show you that you do not you know. Um, I did the first time to play with it and not take the risk of messing up with my students and say, what's going on here? What? And then I do have a course template, but now I have, I'm always uploading because I can just go ahead and export the last edition and everything is going to be updated. So I'm improving every semester the current space. So I don't, I don't think I haven't used my master space for the past three or four semesters since I developed. But all my faculty we'll use a, a master course space to develop, play, make mistakes, do whatever they want. And then I teach them how to import into that term. And now they're good to go. I can kill that master course space. In fact, the master course space is always helpful if I want to have somebody else looking what they have done. So I cannot give another faculty member access to a term-based course, because they don't have permission to look at grades or anything else. But I, I give them the, I ask the permission to give the, the, that, that sandbox, right? So they go there, they try, they make say they can, they can mess it up, then it's, it's going to be okay. Yes, Deb? Um, I know you said that you're sort of deploying the, the, the ability to have this sort of look and feel to, to the program. So the MPH master, program? Yeah, so is there a, a master course space you've created that you give access to those faculty so they have a starting point? Uh, 
When I, the first is this interesting question. The first time that I show a faculty member what I have done, who never taught an online course, I was in a faculty meeting, and they were they were charged to develop this course. I swear, there was a faculty member start crying, and she said, "I will never be able to do all this. I don't have time to do this. I have to go for tenure, and this is a mess." And then she said, well, "Calm down." <laughs> so, uh, now her life became miserable for the past one hour. Say, "Calm down. You will be fine, and I'll be here to help and support you with this." So it was like a little therapy moment with her. <laughs> but let me say something. I never develop a master template for them because I want them, in fact, to learn how to do all the tricks. Okay. So I use it as a learning moment for them. This professor, which I think, no, it's not, not this course, but she developed her course space in the first semester she was assigned and given time to do this. She developed the best course space. She developed the best lectures online. She used uh, Prezi with all her lectures. And then at the end of at the end of development, she thought she never taught the course. She developed the, the whole material, and somebody else will teach her course. Okay, because we have course developers and people who teach the course on the MPH. So then she came to me and said, Marcio. I have learned so much this semester. My face, to f my course right now. I'm using the template that you gave to me, that I and I'm modifying so I can use mm -hmm. later on. So I want them to develop their own way to think about their course. So I don't. I avoid to create. I create an identity. That's that's what it is here. But I don't create a template for each course. Like if you use units in your course, keep using units. Do not change for modules because I want everyone to have modules or sessions. If some people have very different nature, like some courses are seminar courses. They have a completely different structure. They don't have exams. They don't have quizzes. Quizzes do not work for them. So when I work with them, I basically, I have a chart on my door. I close my office door and I say, what do you have? Tell me what do you need? And so I just basically start creating this kind of thing with them. Are you willing to do this? Are you willing to do this? And then I think, how can we organize for them? The only thing that I did is the front page. The home page, they all have exactly the same. So, and if you do not know, this is nothing else than a Word document template. If you go to Word documents and find templates, there is a, a template for newsletter, I guess. I'll show you what it is. And then I just copied this image here, okay? And they have sessions, for example. In Biostatistics 1, they have sessions. Session 1, Session 2. They replicate the menu. That's the way that they did, and I love it. I just keep encouraging them. Thanks, David. And then I keep in So they did different. They put lectures, readings, class notes, assignments, and quiz all here. And here, when they go to quiz, it goes to quiz one only. OK? But this is a professor who met with me, had no idea how to do this, and say, that's how I want to do, Marcio. Say, let's do what you want, not what I want you to do. <laughs> because if I provide a template, first I think I'm going to first spoil them a little bit, spoon feeding a little, and I don't want to do this. And I want them to learn how, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Instead of just getting something, then say, OK, I don't have to modify anything. Of course, I went there, and I, it, they come for a review session with me. So I just did my first module. Can I show it to you? So they show it to me and say, let's increase the ladder a little bit here. Let's put the image a little bit smaller here. And so I do my touch-ups touch, touch -ups with them uh, in terms of design and graphics here. But I try to empower them to have the first one successfully. And then on the second semester, I say, I think this link is not really, this is boring. I want to put another image here. So then I keep adding slowly. That's how I did, and I think that's how they should do it. Okay? Uh, I'll tell you what I did, how I come up with this concept here. If you go to syllabus, of course, the accreditation folks want to kill me right now. Canvas will do this, right? As long as I have all the dates right, Canvas will do this for me. But they can click here, download the course syllabus. And and that's my course syllabus. So all the graphics starts when I decide to create a different type of course syllabus. Thanks, Chris. And that's the course syllabus for the course. And this is a Word document template for a newsletter. So I have hyperlinks here, so students have the course description here. 
and I tell them, so I can try to make a, a course syllabus that's less boring. Of course, I have the template that accreditation requires, everyone needs to have the same. I do both. I do the accreditation and I give the secretary the accreditation one and my students have the fun, good one. <laughs> Interesting. So they can follow up here on page four if they, they click here. There is an online participation canvas component here. They have all the information here. And I do have the quiz zero that you saw. The quiz zero is a module. Uh, it is a quiz a syllabus for the quiz, right? So uh, the quiz zero they take after they meet for the first time. So they need to read the quiz, the syllabus. And I have done this for the first time. And I'm writing a, a, a so here's the secret that I'll tell you. Especially, Maria, for an online course. The secret is to create this on the last page of your course syllabus. I create what I call a checklist. And I tell my students, do you want to succeed in this course? Follow this calendar here. And it's a recommended schedule. You don't have to. I recommend you to do this. I recommend my students to take the quiz, like he's saying here, it's saying here, is due on February 4th at 11.59. I strongly recommend you to take the quiz because if you don't take it, you miss the points for it. That's all. Right? So I recommend it to watch the lecture whenever they want. But the quiz is due on Tuesday, 11.59. And they know, keep consistent. Every Tuesday, 11.59, there's a quiz. They know, that semester, if you don't have a quiz, they write to me. What's, where's the quiz? I know it's tomorrow's Tuesday, and where's the quiz? I don't even <laughs> have to tell them that, right? So if the quiz link has any problem, on Sunday or Saturday, I, start, I start receiving, professor, the quiz is not available. What's going on? And they know right now, I got the point that I know that a week before, the quiz is automatically released. I don't even go there <laughs> and release the quiz, okay? But they know that they have to watch the interview online. They have to take the quiz. There's a lecture face-to-face -face with me on this on Wednesday. And there's a lab assignment, and the lab assignment is due a week after the lab. So for online course, this is very helpful. Because I split by weeks, and I say, I recommend you to do Monday, watch the lecture. Tuesday, take the quiz. Wednesday, watch this lecture. Thursday, take this quiz. So I basically give them a weekly suggestion how they can succeed in the class. If they, don't, if they are working on the summer and they do something else, they want to catch up, they know what they have to catch up. I, I literally try to help them as much as I can. Give them a, a I say, put in your dashboard this, put in your, your pin board in your bedroom and check, check, check. And I, I have to tell them, I don't have my course syllabus on my pin board, on my, on my dashboard, on my office, but I do have the course schedule. So by Monday, I try to look at the quizzes and what are the mistakes and how many questions so I can address this on Wednesday. So I look at the, the course schedule to see which lecture I have to give on Wednesday so I can prepare my, my lecture. Okay? This is something that's very helpful to the students. The other thing that I did, and this is more about flip it, uh, the flip it thing, so a lot of students do not understand what is an online course. I used to say, I went for several conferences and I, and I go to those they have those, uh, the conventions, and they have all those booksellers over there, right? So I keep looking at the book, a book that teaches students how to be online learners. All the books are for faculty, mm -hmm. right? But they do not have books for students to learn what does it take to be a good online learner if I'm taking a full online course, right? So I keep asking the editors, and they keep giving the business cards, saying, do you want to write one? <laughs> write this. We're going to buy from you. <laughs> you should write one. But I think th I have to teach my students how to be my students. So basically, on the Flip It or even online, my intro, I had an intention in my first lecture to tell the students, here's the expectations that I have. And that's, you want to succeed on this, I'll help you. But that's what you need to do. Okay, and I do with my students what I call right now, I came up with this late idea. This semester worked fine. We know what I call a learning agreement. Mm -hmm. When I tell them all this concept that I have, learning is in your head, you have to learn. If you're not learning, I am in trouble. Because that's my job and that's why you're paying this course, for me to teach this course. So if you're not learning, it's your responsibility to talk to me. 
If everything that I offer to you is not working, I'll find a different way. If I have to meet with you every week, I will, as long as you learn. But if you are not learning, and if you're not taking responsibility and being accountable for your own learning, I cannot do anything. Don't come at the end of semester and say, I'm, I'm failing this course. It's too late. So I have this conversation with my students, and they know that I'm in the, on their side, and I am not in the control mode when I control when you're going to see things, and I take things off, that now you're not going to be available. I am not in the control mode anymore. You have everything. You want to learn everything in three weeks and spend your time learning calculus? I'm fine with this. If you're learning, I'm okay. If you don't want to come to class, if you want to Google everything and not learn from my lectures, I'm fine. That's what the word that they leave right now. If my students can Google things, I used to say this several times, I don't have to be there to teach them. But I promise them, when I come to see them on Wednesdays, that section, when they walk away, they won't be able to Google anything that I said. Because that section is something that is my experience as a teacher, the way that I synthesize, that I summarize all this, and I give to them as a gift, and that never is going to be replaced. That's me. And if somebody else walk in, they're going to teach a different class. Right? But all this that I made, I'm just making it easier for them so they have to Google. Right? But if they want to go ahead and Google something else, and my students send me links and say, Professor, I found this, you should use for the class because I learned so much from this. Say, okay, I add the link here. And I usually, I usually have links, I think I have here as well, um, on module one, I guess. I used to, I think I still have. No, when I have iframe, I used to have like a explore the web when I put additional links that they don't have to, but if they want to explore more, some students they want to be physical therapists, they want to see clinical links that have clinical case. So they enjoy things that I, I talk in the class and they say, and then I, talk, I teach the class and they send me three, four, five links. So I end up sharing with them by message. But I, I, that makes me realize that I should create a space when students can explore further if they want to learn more. But the whole concept here is that, and if I want to just go settings here and eliminate all this and just leave home here, I can just force the students to navigate in here. There is a downside. Canvas analytics will tell you access to this, will not tell you access to this. Okay? I don't think it will account if they click here or not, because when they click module two here, it's to a page but not to a function that is here, I guess. I, and I also have to say that my expectations for learning analytics, analytics, it's bigger than just click, because click doesn't mean anything. You know how many times I click here and I didn't learn anything from this content here. So my students can click and download things. Uh, I have a faculty member yesterday say, I'm so happy, I, my, my paper was downloaded 3,000 times. And say, good for you, it doesn't mean that they read. <laughs> and they look and say, Oh, come on, I'm so happy now. <laughs> I'm just telling you, because this is all learning analytics is sometimes. People say, oh, students click 300 times on this. It doesn't mean that he did anything on this. You know, they're, sort of, they're basically just trying to link and the web is not, the link is not working <laughs> or whatever. But uh, you have to be mindful that if you want to use learning analytics in your course, I don't think the internal links will help. It's going to help the students. And, and again, just want to say, I'm trying to design something that's helpful to them. You're not teaching the course for yourself. You have to design for your students and tell them what's possible to do. And my students, I love, they, they gave me good feedbacks on this because it makes their life easier to navigate. But I, I import into PowerPoint and I make this table here in PowerPoint and make a JPEG. So if you go to files here, you have access to my course. You can go there and explore. But if you go to files, I have all the images here. See? So this image here on teratogens is a picture that I took on, let me show you, on DC when I was walking. And then I got in this mood of just using my iPhone and taking pictures. And <laughs> I think it's module three. No, module four.
When I have to tell you that you can just you when you start looking at the graphics, you just get creative. Oh, yeah, and 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 be and have fun, right? Ooh. Yeah, that's an, an image. That's an image that I took in DC when I was walking the mall. I look at the image, so that's going to be perfect for my teratogens. <laughs> so I took the picture, you know. And it is a, it is a plate that I have on, on, on the mall in the Washington DC. So you can play with the images as you wish and 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 do other other things. Uh, you can also do a different course menu. I think we still have two minutes. I want to show the one that we did together. That. Um, now I'm asking Nedelina to do the library resource for us. Uh, which one is, do you remember this call? Self-based Canvas yeah. tutorial? Yeah. yeah, that's a different way. And it's basically, it's not iframe anymore, right? No, it's not. So that's not have the table, but that is um, a way that you can do the home page differently. So this is an image that I create on PowerPoint, right? Yeah. I think you guys updated already, right? You, yeah, you added. Yeah, we just yeah. put a new one page. Yeah, because I didn't remember this. This is great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Canvas changed the logo. Mm -hmm. The idea is to have the logo. Uh, we I did the draft like probably uh, two years ago, and the guys are playing with it. So you can have all the hyperlinks here, but you can also have workshop best practice. It's a different way to use the menu. So you can be very creative how you want to do this. I recommend you to do the pick up a, a white paper. And do like playing how you want to do how you envision that and and then we can make it real as you want it's it's you I used to tell my faculty tell me how you want and then I'll tell what's possible <laughs> right but I you can do a match and if you want to learn more if you have questions my email it's easy to memorize it's Marcio is my first name at umd.edu and I'll be happy to s just to meet with you and discuss individually and I usually do that with several people and if you need help like I did from before like I think it's if it's fun if you want to come I usually learn something when I'm developing a brand new different style I say oh I never thought about doing this so when I help someone I end up learning something new <laughs> for myself and I improve my course so if you want to come and talk and discuss. And sign up for Marcio's workshop. Oh, you can go to the workshop. It's open next Monday out at the um, conference ITL. website. So just look at the conference also. <laughs> yeah, we will have limited seating so that we can give everybody a chance to get, to get it done. Yeah, yeah I, won't be very, I will be very frustrated if people do not get things done on that <laughs> workshop. Because I want people to walk out with a draft sure. with a course. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Two hours. Yes. Could be Bring your own device. <laughs> yeah. We will have power cords. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Questions? <laughs> Let me look to everyone. You always ask good questions. <laughs> you always challenge me. <laughs> you always challenge me. Uh, did you learn something new? I did. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank thank you. As I used to tell my students, I hope I inspired you to do something different. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.